Welcome to the release presentation of Katina X. Today we are introducing the latest and upcoming changes related to self-sovereign identity. My name is Julia. My name is Stefan. Together we hope we can raise your interest in contributing to Katina X. Starting with our SSI wallets. With the latest release, we have delivered a managed identity wallet, supporting delivering a wallet introducing an issue or function. With 2405, we are now changing the whole solution. With our May release this year, we will release a complete new SSI flow, including a couple of components and functions. First of all, we did work on the new process of issuing credentials, managing credentials, and allowing soon multi-wallet provider, including bring your own wallet. With the step of creating new standards based on the new implementation, the cornerstones are set to enable the future of self-sovereign identity inside the data space. Those standards enable us to ensure that no matter which wallet provider you choose, the experience remains consistent, allowing for a seamless transition and interaction with our services. As already mentioned, we are also excited to announce that we are making big steps towards the implementation of Bring Your Own Wallet. This innovative step will empower users to integrate their own wallets with our platform. The integration process is designed to be smooth, ensuring that you can leverage our services without the need to switch to a new wallet. But no matter if you are planning to bring your own wallet or not, for those of you who are keen on experimenting and exploring the possibilities of digital wallets, we will soon be offering a free and open source wallet solution. This wallet is not just a tool for everyday use, but also a playground for testing and discovery. It will come equipped with features including issuer and customer tenants, signing capabilities, and revocation services. This initiative is part of our commitment to transparency and community engagement, providing a tangible way for users to understand and influence the development of our wallet ecosystem. We hope you are as excited as we are to see our solutions growing and to get a part of the journey. While prototyping, testing, exploring, and validating digital wallets, we realized that an actual user interface is needed, allowing users to effortlessly navigate through the wallet content. With the latest release of 24.3, we enabled and plan to further enhance the wallet user interface. The new wallet UI is currently connected to the wallet itself, but will get transferred to the issuer component with the upcoming releases. The wallet UI itself will enable the user to access available credentials, their status, the expiry date, the issuer, as well as managing credential life cycles. We kept the UI super simple, easy to digest with possibility to enhance the content based on the operation needs. In conclusion, the user-friendly UI of Digital Wallet is not just about aesthetics, it's about creating an environment that enhances the user experience by making the management of credentials easier, more convenient, and customer-centric. We empower users to navigate the digital world with confidence and ease. The last new highlight component of the upcoming release is the issuer component, a solution for credential issuance and management. The new issuer component enables the creation and issuance of digital credentials for companies, ensuring a seamless experience. Similar like targeted with the FOSS wallet, the issuer component is a free and open source release component, allowing developers and organizations to contribute and benefit from our implementations. With the issuer component, we are planning to enable multi-issuers soon, means different issuers can connect to the data space and issue credentials. Regarding credential templates, the component is flexible to manage multiple different credential templates. Manage credential expiry as issuer, you can customize the component based on your needs and test easily new credential types as part of the issuer process. Of course, the lifecycle of credentials is not always straightforward. There may be instances where a credential needs to be revoked. Our system provides a robust revocation service to address this need, allowing for invalidation of credentials in case of any changes or errors. And with that, I'm super happy to now hand over to Stefan to show us more about the presentation flow. Thank you, Julia. Those components and functionalities provide the basis for enabling data exchange between companies. 
In order to exchange data, we are using a logical component that we call the connector. A connector is used by the participants in order to interact with each other. The so-called data space protocol, or DSP in short, specifies those interactions between connectors. So for our Catena X May release, we are proud to tell you about our version one of the data space protocol. Besides the release of the protocol, we've also upgraded our reference implementation of a connector, which is the Tractus X Eclipse data space connector. So with the Catena X May release, you can expect a stable protocol as well as a ready to use reference implementation to enable the process of accessing, managing and sharing data across different IT stacks, platform, environments and even legal entities in general. So this leaves the question open, how to identify and manage access control between connectors in a secure and sovereign way. For this, we are coming back to the components Julia showed before, and specifically to the wallet and a component called Secure Token Service that is associated to it. For the communication between those components, we've developed the so-called Identity and Trust Protocol, or IATP. The Identity and Trust Protocol provides a mechanism for Catena X members to securely communicate and validate credentials that enable interoperable access to privileged data using the data space protocol specifications in a way that preserves privacy and limits the possibility of network disruption. The ITP makes it possible for independent software solutions to implement these specifications and interoperate on the Catena X network together. So let's play it through for the data space protocol and especially the catalog request. We have two connectors here. The left one acts as a data provider and the right one as a data consumer. First of all, the consuming connector requests a new token from the secure token service. This token is being put in the header and the consuming connector executes the catalog request to a data provider connector. The data provider connector now uses the token to request credentials from the data consumer's wallet. The wallet evaluates the token in step 4 to only provide those credentials the data consumer wants to show or that are required for this particular use case. And now, step 5, these are returned as verifiable presentations to the connector. The data provider connector is now able to use those presentations for its policy validation in step 6. Finally, the right contract offers are returned to the data consumer. We hope you understood well our main improvements for the Catena X May release. And also, we hope to see you soon on one of our Matrix channels or on GitHub. Welcome to our data exchange feature demonstration. Today, we will explore the process of data exchange between two parties, the data provider and the data consumer. This demonstration will illustrate the initial setup the negotiation as well as how credential verification can play a crucial role in the data offer negotiation process. Let's start with the journey. Our data consumer on the left side verifies his existing use case frame agreements. As you can see, in the current state, the consumer signed the behavior twin framework, while traceability is unsigned. The same he can nicely verify in his wallet UI. Let's have a quick look at the wallet UI to see the same. In the wallet UI, we can directly see which credential the company owns. It is directly interfaced with the wallet provider. Looking at the right side, on the data provider side, the data provider registered the data set with the usage policy of traceability, which you can now nicely see on the right hand side means only those data consumers who hold a traceability credential can negotiate and access the data offer. As soon as the data offer is successfully registered, our data consumer now switches to his connector user interface 
and searches for the respective data offer from the provider. He can view the offer and also receive the information of the necessary credentials. Even through he doesn't hold the credential of traceability, he tries to negotiate the offer. On the data provider, as well as on the data consumer side, we can now nicely see that the request is that getting declined due to the reason that the traceability credential is not existing on the consumer side. We have now visible on the right hand side the logs which showing the decline case as well as on the right hand side the same. Following the unsuccessful attempt of data negotiation, the data consumer recognizes the need for the correct credentials. The user navigates to the credential request interface, showcasing how to request and acquire the necessary permission for data access. This part of the demonstration highlights the ease and efficiency of obtaining credentials within our system, ensuring users are well equipped for secure data exchange. You can now follow the process how the credential is requested. After receiving the new credentials, which includes the approval by the issuer, the data consumer can now view the new own credential inside his wallet and right away retrigger the negotiation process. Let's have a joint look at this. Going back to our connector user interface, we are searching again for the data offer and retrigger the negotiation while still the traceability credential is a must have. This time the connector verifies the credential successfully, allowing the data consumption to proceed. This segment of the demonstration emphasizes the seamless integration of security protocols with the data exchange process, ensuring both the integrity and accessibility of data. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and got a pretty nice picture of the user journey.